let's flip to uh, this other matter, which is also a challenge before the country. But we had Mr. Femi Fallon, and this is what he said about it. As an institution has no business whatsoever in the maintenance of internet security in our country. But we've seen lately... No, 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 no. Please, it is very illegal and unconstitutional for the chief of army staff for the chief of defense staff to be threatening civilians in our country. We're not under a military dictatorship, by the way. It is the business of the police to maintain law and order in our country. It is only when the role of the military and forces under the constitution, section 217, right, is to protect the territorial integrity of the country. And, you know, you defend the country against external aggression. But you don't ask a soldier to go and monitor a polling booth or to go and arrest a criminal suspect. The Nigerian army that killed and buried secretly the dead bodies of 347 people in December last year can have the temerity right, to be telling us and teaching us how to protect life and property in any good state. Furthermore, in the particular instance, in the case of the attack on Okwabinimbo community in Enugu state, again we have all forgotten the fact that the community alerted the governor of that state, and this is already in the public domain, the governor summoned a meeting of the Security Council in that state and gave specific, specific instructions that that community be protected. So you had information on the impending attack. The commissioner of police addressed a press conference and dismissed the whole thing as a rumor and asked everybody to go about it. He saw a normal duty. Again, the attack took place. People were killed. Properties were destroyed. What has the government done? You have merely transferred the commissioner of police to another state. Well, there you have Mr. Femi Falana, SAN, now talking about the role of the military in the country. He did say they have no business policing the country. Do you agree with For that? the first time, my brother Silk Falana got it wrong completely. He was citing section 271 of the Constitution. The pertinent section he should have cited is section 281, subsections 1, 2, 3. Because section 271 only deals with the creation of the armed forces. Sorry, 217. Okay. 218 now says the president, as commander in chief, has the power under the Constitution. To direct the army in operational matters. In pursuance to 218, subsection 3, Puhari now, in view of what happened at least two weeks ago, he made a statement that the situation in the country is going at an alarming state towards chaos. And he told the whole world that he was going to ask the military to come up. In pursuance of his powers under section 28, uh, 218 of section 3, he now directed the military. So it is not fair for Falano to take in isolation the statement of the Ministry of Defense. That statement has a background. In pursuance, even if you look at that section of the law, he says the president can even delegate to the army part of his powers is there but he has omitted that section now the question is we lawyers we say facts are sacred you do not take an issue in isolation and you know apply the law you have to give it a holistic this you have to look at events that created the situation he is talking on the situation that the army has made a statement but he's not looking at what has caused that statement, whether under the law they have the right so to do. As I pointed out to you, section 218 of section 3 says the president can direct operations and ask the army to do at any time. Also, he can even delegate this power to the army to do whatever he directs them. But 
in all of those, I mean, if uh, it now becomes a norm, even without directives, because I think he alluded to that, wherein they now begin to issue statements that are narrowly, people have the impression that, yes, it's now uh, the military performing policing functions. He says that is to the detriment of police. We should be focusing on how to strengthen the police and not just all the time calling on the military to perform those primary functions. Okay. Let us look at the scenario. Three months ago, we were told the refineries, two of the refineries have started producing petroleum products. We were happy. Three months ago, the generation of electricity rose from three to five. All of a sudden, the sabotage started. Now electricity generation is about 1.8 or 2. There is no fuel to be, you know. These are the antecedents. The spate of kidnapping in Nigeria today has not only left the normal domain in eastern Nigeria well, <laughs> it has crept into Ekiti State, Ogu State. So the president cannot because security is the fundamental duty of every government without security you and i can't be here without security i will not be able to go to court so security is fundamental and the police have consistently said we are incapable because the type of guns these militants have or these kidnappers, or these Fulani headsmen, the guns they carry, we do not have such sophisticated guns. And we have to curb these excesses. So under the Constitution, backed by that Constitution, the President says, look, I will now ask the Army. The Army naturally will not make statements during a civilian regime, except if the powers were delegated to them by Mr. President. And we have seen in the Constitution. So the army is doing what the commander-in-chief has asked them to do. But the other aspect of that is, uh, for instance, yes, we, we've seen these cases play themselves out. But when it becomes a regular feature, uh, how do we address that? Because the police have also said, look, we need more capacity. We haven't seen any of those harassment with AK-47 arrested and handed over to the police which is part of the matters or issues that also come up. But if you're directing that to happen, we need to begin to see results in those areas. But what happens? But um, you have never complained during the Boko Haram insurgency when the military were making statements that they should not make statements, you know, without clearance or anything like that, because the situation warrants it. Even, even if there was clear directive from the president at the time? Yes said go and fight this insurrection and the daily they give the bulletin they make press conferences we are all aware of it nobody has raised any eyebrow why should it be now that they are making a statement they've made over 20 statements within the past 12 months the military but again if you look at it i think the why now may also be because of what we've seen uh, don't forget chairman just reminded us that first the police uh, is saying that they need more more men mm -hmm. and uh, even though before that uh, uh, asking the president had already said uh, they should go ahead and employ about 10,000 which most people just realize that is insufficient and uh, we're looking at the excesses the alleged excesses uh, first is the killing and uh, burial in in a mass grave of some other people in Kaduna state and a couple of other places where they have gone and uh, uh, that is why Nigerians are saying wait a minute uh, perhaps the civil uh, security unit, which is the police, would have been better if uh, we had allowed them uh, take over their, uh, you know, constitutional role in the first place. Well, um, different diseases, you know, can be treated in different ways. You are not happy at what is going on in Nigeria. If you are true to your conscience, the spirit of kidnapping the bonding of uh, pipelines and uh, gas lines. It affects the common man in the street. I don't enjoy asking my driver to go and fill the tank of my car and he will not come back for the next 14 hours, queuing to buy petrol. 
And the time we were seeing the green light in the tunnel, these boys again came in the name of militancy. It is not militancy. This is sabotage. And if I may even say it, sabotage not from the militancy uh, generals, but from interested party in Nigeria today who don't want us to have electricity generated, who have vested interest in selling generators. And the day we start having constant light in Nigeria, the generators go one side. So there are many vested interests that can trigger up this sabotage. The police, I agree, should be allowed. But the Constitution says, under that section 283, not 217 that Father No is mentioning, that situation that arises as they have arisen now, the president has the power to ask the military to go and intervene. So the police, I agree, is their normal function, but they are incapacitated, as you said. Lack of ammunition, lack of men. Do we allow the sabotage to go on?